Hey Algebra, welcome to Chapter 5, Lesson 2. Today's lesson, we're going to be solving inequalities involving multiplication or division. So our goals today is I can solve inequalities by using multiplication, and I can solve inequalities by using division. Our standards are right there. Make sure you copy that down. Let's go ahead and start today's lesson. One of the rules before we get going is this rule here. When multiplying or dividing by a negative sign, your job is to flip the inequality sign. Now the key word is the word by. When multiplying or dividing by a negative, flip the inequality sign. It doesn't mean a negative divided by a positive. It means when we take a number and we divide it by a negative, we have to change the direction of the inequality sign. And this is the only rule that's different from things that we've learned in the past. So what we're going to be doing today is we're going to solve some problems that involve multiplication and division of inequalities. Let's go ahead and look at our first example. So in example one, we have two times the number is greater than or equal to six. Well, we're looking at this, and this two is multiplying by a. And our job is to get the letter a all by itself, or the variable a. So what we do is we draw a line through our inequality, and we're going to get rid of this 2. Well, that 2 is multiplying by a, so we divide by 2. And if we divide by 2 on the other side, we get a is greater than or equal to 6 divided by 2 is 3. So 3 would be my answer. Now, you could use the same skills that we learned in the previous lesson to graph this, but I'm not going to make you graph it. But if you did have to graph it, you would draw a number line. You could put three in the middle, count one, two, three up, count one, two, three down. And then you look at the symbol, and it says it's greater than or equal to, so that's a closed circle. And it's pointing at the number, and the line would go right. So anything that's this way of that would make that a true statement. As long as the number is bigger than or equal to 3, we're going to be bigger than or equal to 6. In example 2, we have negative 6b is less than 18. So our job would be to get the letter b all by itself. So we draw a line through our inequality sign. We're going to divide by negative 6. And if we divide by negative 6 on one side, we divide by negative 6 on the other side. And I'm putting enunciation on the word by for a reason because we're dividing by a negative. And when we divide by a negative, this inequality sign actually has to change direction. Negative six divided by negative six is positive. Um, six divided by six is one. So I have one letter B. 18 divided by negative six is negative three. So as long as the variable B is greater than negative three, my first piece is actually going to be a true statement. So we're going to try some numbers and see if that's true. So neg b is greater than negative 3. So let's try negative 6 times negative 2. Okay, negative 6 times negative 2, that's a positive 12. Positive 12 is less than 18. That's a true statement. Negative 6, and let's just try positive 6. Negative 6 times positive 6. That is a negative 36, and negative 36 is less than 18. That's a true statement. Now let's try a number bigger, or less than um, negative 3. So let's try negative 4. Negative 6 times negative 4. A negative and a negative make a positive. 6 times 4, that's 24. And 24 is not less than 18. So in this case, I know that this is a true statement. And this is why we're able to flip the inequality sign. Because... Whenever we're looking at the negative side of something, sometimes it just doesn't work if we had it going the other direction. So as long as b is bigger than negative 3, we get true statements. If b was less than negative 3, we're going to get a false statement like we did at the very bottom here. So that's the reason why we flipped the inequality sign whenever multiplying or dividing by a negative. All right, in example three, we're going to be dealing with a fraction. Negative 1 half c is less than, neg or less than 4. So in this problem, our job is to get the variable c all by itself. Draw a line through inequality. We're going to get rid of this minus, or the negative one-half. Well, to get rid of a fraction that's multiplying to a variable, what we do is we multiply that same fraction 
by its inverse or its reciprocal, so we're going to multiply by negative 2 over 1. And if we multiply by negative 2 over 1 on one side, we have to multiply the other side by negative 2 over 1 as well. Now, this is a whole number times a fraction, and this is a fraction times a fraction, but let's just look at this side. A negative times a negative, that's a positive. 2 times 1, that's 2. 1 times 2, that's 2. And I know that 2 divided by 2 is equal to 1. So the variable C is less than, actually it's going to flip signs because we're multiplying by a negative. Since we're multiplying by a negative, we'd have to change the direction of the sign. We're going to put the 4 over 1. 4 times negative 2, that's negative 8. 1 times 1, that's 1. So C is greater than negative 8 divided by 1 is negative 8. C is greater than negative 8, and that's the answer to this problem. So we need to remember in example 3, to get rid of a fraction next to a variable, we multiply by the same fraction flipped on both sides. And the reason why we do that is so we can end up with a number divided by itself, which always gives us 1. One letter C right there. And if we multiply by the same fraction flipped on one side, we have to multiply by the same fraction flipped on the other. Since we're multiplying by a negative, the sign here has to change direction. Anytime you multiply by a negative, your sign changes direction. So this is the answer to this question. Let's go ahead and look at some division problems. One word problem, and we're done for the day. In example four, we have the variable e divided by four is less than six. Our job is to get the variable e by itself. So we draw a line through an inequality sign, and we know that e is being divided by 4. So we need to get rid of division of 4. In math, it's all about the opposites. So to get rid of dividing by 4, we're going to multiply by 4. And if we multiply by 4 on one side, we multiply by 4 on the other. This cancels out, and we get e is less than 6 times 4 is 24. And that's the answer to this problem. E is less than 24. Let's go ahead and do another one. All right, example five, we have F divided by negative three is greater than or equal to 15. So we're dividing by a negative, and we need to get rid of dividing by a negative. To get rid of dividing by a negative, we're going to multiply by a negative. So we're going to multiply by a negative three since we're dividing by negative three. A negative divided by negative is a positive. 3 divided by 3 is 1, so we can cancel that out, which means we get f. Now, we're, div we're multiplying by a negative, and since we're multiplying by a negative, we have to change the direction of the inequality sign. 15 times negative 3, that's negative 45. So our answer is f is less than or equal to negative 45. Let's go ahead and look at two word problems and then call it a day. In example six, we're looking at a word problem here. It says, at Mid Park High School, two-thirds of the junior class attended the dance. There were at least 200 students, or 200 juniors, at the dance. How many juniors are in the junior class? So what we know is two-thirds of the juniors, but we don't know how many juniors are at the dance, two-thirds of the juniors. There were at least 200. The word at least tells us our inequality sign because that's one of the key words of inequalities, at least. There were at least 200. Well, at least means greater than or equal to 200. So the problem we're solving is two-thirds of juniors is greater than or equal to 200. So what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of this fraction by multiplying by the same fraction flipped. And if we do that to one side, we do that to the other. This one cancels out to equal 1. And we're multiplying by a positive. And since we're multiplying by a positive, we keep the direction the same. 200 times 3, that's 600. 600 divided by 2, that's 300. So that means that the amount of juniors that are in the junior class is at least 300 students. There's 300 or more students in the junior class based on the fact that two-thirds is bigger than or equal to 200. That's the answer to this problem. You know what, guys? I think you guys did awesome today. 
I think we're going to call that quits, and that's it for today's lesson. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I will see you tomorrow.